Alright then, let's get started guys. So, like I was saying, we're going to be modeling a coffee machine in Blender 2.79. So let's go on and prepare the scene or our let's prepare Blender for modeling. So in modeling we're not gonna need the animation timeline, so we're going to get rid of it. So in order to get rid of the animation timeline right in the corner here you see the striped lines here in the corner just hover your mouse over it left click and then drag down and then release when you see an arrow showing down there just release the left click and that closes the timeline now I also wanted to have you guys know that I enabled screencast keys an add-on for blender that allows you to uh, display whatever button I press on my keyboard or on my mouse so you can know whatever button I press along the way in case I don't mention it so just keep your eyes in case you don't hear me say the shortcut for something the hockey for something that I do and you wanna know you you, you, you can just see it down there it will show up down there for you to see so let's get started. Let's load in the reference image we're going to be using to create this coffee machine. Again, just like we closed the timeline, let's create a new window to view our image through while we work. So let's go move your mouse up here. There's another stripe line up here. This allows you to drag, left click, and then drag to the left to create another window or another workspace in Blender. Once you've done that, move down here, move your mouse down here where this tiny cube tab is. Left click on it and you get this list. Move on over to UV or image editor and left click. Now we can load our image in here and start working. So click on open. I will put a, a link in the description for you to download the image. Once you download the image, click on open and look for wherever you saved your image and open it. I have mine in desktop and in my tutorial stuff. So I'm going to click on this to display the images so I can uh, know which one I'm selecting. So this is what I'm looking for. I'm going to select it now and open it. So I'm going to double click and that opens it in here for me. So now we're ready to work. I'm just going to move this to the right a little bit for more space over here. So now let's start working. But first, let's get rid of this tab, this uh, sidewall or what we call the properties panel in Blender and also the tools bar in Blender. In order to get rid of the toolbar, if you don't need it, just press T on your keyboard. And in order to get rid of the properties panel, if you don't need it, just press N on your keyboard. Now let's get started. Let's get started in Blender. Now, I also wanted to have you guys know something. There is this movement in Blender I need you to know. If you want to move around in Blender like I'm doing right now, moving from left to right like this, all you have to do is hold down your shift button, middle mouse click, and then move your mouse. That allows you to move around from left to right in a horizontal manner or in a vertical manner. But if you release the shift and then middle mouse click and move your mouse, it allows you to move around your workspace. Alright, let's get started. So we press shift and then A. First of all, I want you to take a look at this coffee machine. What shape? would it look like if we were to add it in right now does it look like a cone does it look like a cube does it look like a cylinder what does it look like obviously it looks like a cube so anytime you're modeling you want to add in the closest of the object it looks like your reference image looks like so let's add in a cube now so we're going to press shift and then a the hot key to add in an object hover over the mesh and then select cube and left click so that adds in your cube right here 
but we want to move this above the ground right now it's in the middle of the ground so we want to move this above the ground now if you have numpad on your keyboard I'm going to explain something real quick right now if you have numpad on your keyboard this allows you to move in uh, in uh, for example if you want to move in front of your cube you want to view your cube from the front view you press 1 on your numpad and that allows you to move in front view and you can see right here up here it is written front perspective front perspective you can also switch into a graphic view which basically is like a 2d pasted form of the object on a paper so if you want to move into also graphic all you have to do is press 5 on your numpad on your numpad press 5 on your numpad and you move into also graphic view sort of like a 2d form of the uh, whole workspace if you want to move to the right of your of your object, press 3 on your keyboard. If you want to move to the top, press 7 on your numpad. If you want to move to the bottom, you can hold down your control and then press 7. That takes you to the bottom. If you want to move to the back, you want to hold down control and press 1. If you want to move to the left, hold down control and press 3. Again, 1 for front view, control 1 for back view, 3 for right view, control 3 for left view, 7 for top view, control 7 for bottom view, 5 to switch between orthographic and perspective view, like that. So in modeling you want to, most, most of the time you want to be editing your object in perspective mode. That allows you to, you know, easily manipulate or make make changes to your object easily and uh, view it in all angles so let's get started as I was saying we want to move this above the ground as right now it is in the middle of the ground so let's move this above the ground and in order to do that let's move on into the front view by pressing 1 on the numpad so we want to move the whole object above or we want to make it sit on this red line the horizontal axis which is the ground, which is acting as the ground right now. So, again, let's press G on our keyboard. And then we want to move it up in a Z axis. So we press Z on the keyboard. And now, I want to explain something to you. You can see right here in the workspace that there's sort of grid lines. These grid lines you're seeing here, they, they, they are some, they are, uh, some kind of measurements in Blender. Uh, which we'll be getting more into as we start the advanced or intermediate modeling series. So, for now, in order to move or jump between these lines, right down here you have this tab that says snap element. So you have increment, you have vertex, edge, face, and volume. Right now I want you to focus on the vertex, which should be your default selection right now. So the vertex, uh, the increment, sorry, the increment allows you to move your your object in specific axes is in increment so right now in this case your increment is going to be this grid lines so when you move this when you move when you press G on your keyboard and then specify the axis in this case which is Z and hold down control as you move your your mouse it is going to snap every single movement to the next grid line depending on which direction you're moving it. So we're going to be moving this up. So watch as it snaps to each grid line as it goes up. Remember, hold down control and move up. So you can see it keeps snapping to the This enables us to make sure that this is sitting directly on the x-axis right here, which is the ground. So it enables us to make sure that it is sitting right on the x-axis. So once you have achieved that, left-click to confirm. Left-click to confirm your... your translation or right click to undo the translation so if you right if you right click on your mouse it undoes your translation all right so you, you, you want to remember that G Z move it and then left click not right click left click if you left click it's going to undo your movement it's going to return it's going to snap it back to the original position you try to move it from so now that we've moved this up we are now sitting on the ground and we can start editing so this is our coffee machine we want to make first of all we want to get the basic shape into place so I'd say I would say um, taking a look at the coffee machine I think 
from here to here which is acting as from here to here in the workspace I think is of good length so we don't have to make any changes to that but coming to the back I think we will have to scale this, scale this down about a third of what we're seeing right now in order to achieve the length from here to here which, which could also be the width so let's do that right now and the only way to do that is to scale this in the y axis okay so we're going to press s on the keyboard and then press y in order to scale in the y axis again hold down your control and scale down in increments alright so we're going to scale this down until we think it is about the size that we need in my case looking looking down here keep your eyes down here keep your eyes down here there's a value that shows up over there just keep your eyes down there and then press G no sorry we're scaling so S and then Y hold on your control and scale down you can see that value drops down so we want to scale this down to 0.7 alright so once you have that left click to confirm the scale so we left click and then we confirm the scale now we have the width of the coffee machine now we want to get the height we want to get the height but right now wherever these I, I, want, I also want to explain something to you right now wherever these arrows are displaying that is where the object or your mesh is going to respond to based on transformation so for example if you want to move it this is where it will respond from if you want to scale it this is where it will respond from if you want to rotate it this is where it will respond from for example you want to rotate in the y-axis you can see it's responding right in the center where the yellow dot is that is the uh, the um, the origin of the geometry alright that is where the rotation or the transformations will occur but we can change where we can change where we want this to be uh, the transformations to be responsive so if you if you take a look down here you have this tab here which says pivot center for rotation and scaling so click on that and it's the pivot point where you want it where you want the object to react to rotation and scaling all right so we have active element we have median point we have individual origins we have 3d case and we have bounding box right now it's on it's on it's on uh, the median point all right but we only have one object so the median point is obviously going to be the origin of the object all right so let's get started so we want to we want to scale this from the button from the bottom here all right because we try to scale it from where it is right now where the arrow is what is going to happen is it's going to scale everything and then we'll end up having the bottom going below the ground again but we don't want that okay we only want to scale it up going in this direction only we don't want it going below the the uh, the ground so how do we do that with the Kessa right in the center here in the center here, which is also at the very bottom of the of the mesh in case you mistakenly moved your Kessa from there as it can be done with your left click like this in case you moved it you made a mistake and moved it out of there all you can do is press shift plus s and then you get this menu all right so the one you want to select is Kessa to center all right select Kessa to center and then it resets your Kessa back to the center for you all right and then we're ready to go so now let's press one on a numpad to get into front view again one orthographic view if you're not in orthographic view remember to press 5 on your numpad keyboard to get into orthographic view so once you're in orthographic view we want to change the uh, responsiveness of the rotation and the scaling from here to where the 3d Kessa is alright so that it, it, it can only respond from here and we can only scale upwards because there's nothing below the pivot point after that to scale downwards so it's not going to end up going below the ground I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say so we're going I'm just going to demonstrate it for you to see so we're going to change the pivot point as I explained from median point to 3d Kessa alright so we change it to 3d Kessa and immediately you notice the arrow move down here so whatever we do whatever rotation scaling is going to be based on the 3d Kessa because of what we did here alright so now we can scale up in the Z axis without worries alright so let's try to get the height right now okay 
So we're going to scale this in the Z axis, press Z, hold control, scale it up, one, two, um, I think this will be about the right height, yeah, so that will be 1.2, and then left click to release. So this is what we have now for the main object, or the main mesh of the cube, okay? Now, now that we have the uh, object in uh, in place, we're going to start the main work now in uh, modeling the coffee machine. So I'll end the part 2 here, and then we'll continue in the part 3. But before we do that, you want to save your work. Okay, obviously you want to save your work. And in Blender, the hotkey for that will be Control plus S, or you could just click on File and choose Save Us. All right. So or you could press Control S, and immediately you're taken here. All right. When you're taken here, you want to. This is this is the the uh, the name. This is the name of your save file. All right. So if you want to change it, just hover your mouse in here and then click, then change the name to whatever you want to change it to. So maybe uh, coffee machine tutorial sorry tutorial like that and press enter now select wherever you want to save it All right so maybe you want to save it on your desktop you can press desktop wherever you want to save it just navigate to that place and then save it in there I'm going to save it in my tutorial stuff saves and then I'm going to click on I'm going to click on save blender file. Just click on save blender file once you have it once you have discovered you once you've uh, selected the location you want to save it. Just click on save blender file and then now it's saved. So all you have to do now as you work along the way is to press control S and then click on whatever shows up here to save it. All right? It won't take you back to that screen anymore cuz you are all you're doing now is overwriting your save your previous save. That's all it's doing now. And the hotkey is Control S. Alright, so we're going to end here and then continue the rest in the part 2.